another bonus episode of the Measured Pencil. Bonus. I'm your pencil DJ playing all the greatest hits, and here with me for Hot Pencil Summer <laughs> is Wes Nelson. Hot stacks of wax counting down. The- <laughs> How are you, Wes? I'm swell. I'm ecstatic. I am emboldened today. Me too, because we have a special guest yes. joining us in studio. Now, we've gotten fan mail, fan email. We've gotten fan- we've got We've gotten fan direct messages through Instagram. Fair enough. <laughs> we've gotten fan pics. Of pencils. Yes. We've gotten hand-colored versions of our logo. We've also gotten comments on the subreddit asking us not to do this anymore. (laughs) (laughs) But here with us is the first person to send us an actual physical pencil to review. Yes. And he's backed it up with coming on the show to talk about it. He's also your uncle. He's my uncle. (laughs) But welcome to the show, Christopher Nelson. Thank you. I'm old school. I tend to write letters and mail real things. (laughs) And you're also a retired teacher, correct? Correct. What did you teach? Yes. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) All of it. I was the elementary teacher for 33 years. Wow. No, maybe 36. It was a long time, and it was great. I taught elementary school, so that meant over those many years, I ended up teaching K through 5 Wow! in my career. Wow. So I bet you saw a lot of pencils. I saw a lot of pencils. (laughs) Yes. I've had a lot of pencils go through my life and into my desk, into the naughty drawer. Yeah, (laughs) they've been there. What pencil did you bring with you? Yes. I I brought the the Bic RT. And the fun thing about this, if I'm not mistaken, it's discontinued. Correct. So how did you get your hands on these? Are these from way back? Yes, they're from way back. When I was a teacher, I was in in a school that was challenging, a lot of challenging kids. They were kids that were below the poverty line, and that developed into something called free and reduced lunch percentage. A company called Kids in Need started collecting all kinds of materials that they thought teachers could use. So what they did was they had a warehouse, and if a school was below that percentage of free and reduced lunch, they got to go to this warehouse and shop. And I'm doing the air quotes because it was free. Nice. What happened was companies like Target, Pentel, 3M, Trend, would send all the stuff that they weren't going to sell anymore or they couldn't sell anymore or they were discontinued, and they'd put those out for us to take. So nice. I would routinely get lots of packages of mechanical wooden pencils and anything else you could think of. I have a collection of Target dogs. It's very envious. Really? <laughs> With the spot around the... Oh, yeah. Yeah, awesome. Well, since this is a discontinued pencil, I have no copy to read. Oh, no. (laughs) I have no Amazon reviews. No. So we're just going to have to dive right in. Oh, sweet. Okay. It's uh, a very long mechanical pencil. (laughs) Yes. Which has its advantages and its disadvantages. It's long, and I like that. It fits well in my hand. It has a good heft. Yes. But when you put it in your pocket, you look like a geek. (laughs) Because it sticks way out of your pocket. Yes. The continual pocket problem. Yes. We had a conversation about that where Big Pocket, the industry of the designs pockets, could get with the pencil manufacturers. We could solve a lot of problems here. I agree. Yeah. The other thing I like about it, though, is the retractable point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That avoids what I call the PLD or pencil lead pocket problem. <laughs> yes. That's uh, a new term. <laughs> And the pencil lead pocket problem, or PLP, would leave lead stains in your pocket. Yes. And then when you washed your clothes, it multiplied. It got bigger. So you looked like even worse of a geek (laughs) after that. The other problem, if you left it still out of its little retractable place, then you end up with the PHP. Okay. Pencil hole pocket, (laughs) which is even worse. Which is worse. Uh, a giant pile of grainy lead in the bottom of your pocket or a giant blob of ink? Mm. Ink is worse. Ink is worse, okay. Yeah, but ink rarely leaves a hole. Right, that's true. Yeah, you're going to see it because it's going to let you know it's there by the giant Right, it's there and for everybody to see. Right. So we've got it in 
pink, purple, and pink. pink. Okay, sweet. I think that was it. I think I had four left. I've had as many as probably 50 or more oh, at really? one time. Yeah. Okay. I just kept on handing them out. They were great prizes. Yeah. And that was the other thing that Kids in Need was good for was a lot of different materials that you can hand out for prizes. Oh, cool. But a lot of useful materials in form of pencils, pens, yeah. paper, et cetera. The other thing I like about this is it has a telescoping eraser. That's really cool. Which, of course, was a source of lots of distraction in a classroom. <laughs> it almost kind of looked like a little bit questionable that, yeah. you know, I mean, I'm not going to say those kind of words on the air, but they're pulling these things out and making those uh, erasers go way <laughs> up into the air and then way down again. And it looked a little suspicious. Yeah. And I did teach fifth grade. So, yes, Absolutely. I know what's going on there. Yeah. And I learned that you have to take out the eraser, pop that off in order to replace the lead. Oh, sure. I mistakenly tried to pull the whole top silver part out, just yank it out, and it broke. But I was able to fix it. Okay. I like this pencil. I love the telescoping eraser. That is really cool. I like the, uh, the you brought along a kit that comes with it. I think that's really schnazzy yeah, it as It comes well. with a little bit of a, a double-barreled kit that has extra erasers and extra lead. Yeah. I have lots of those. That's really slick. <laughs> I did not hand them out for prizes. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's cool that the clip has the same action as the graph gear where it, it acts to engage the retractable part as well. That's really nice. Retractable is always good. It does unscrew, which I would spend hours doing if I had this pencil in class. Yep. It, is, it is very long, which is nice, satisfying. The grip has some tackiness to it. It's slightly grippy. I think it's grippy enough, but for whatever reason, when I look at the top, and we'll post this on Instagram, the eraser, it feels like it's missing a cap for some reason. It feels slightly naked to me. The other thing this kind of reminds me of is, do you remember, and I'm noticing this trend come back now with translucent, how, remember when Apple came out with all those iMacs mm -hmm. and everything they had had a kind of a color to it, like a citrus color or a fluorescent color, and then it was kind of semi-translucent or opaque. And it kind of reminds me of that sort of era, which I'm noticing kind of coming back again. Steven, what do you think? My immediate reaction was this is what the BIC velocity should be. Oh, yeah. I feel like this got discontinued for whatever reason, and then they made that other pencil to be their fat, big pencil, and this one's way better. I love the structure of the grip better. I love the telescoping eraser. I love that the clip retracts the point. I love that it has a retractable point. It doesn't have the problem of that weird point where the, the lead sleeve moves. Right. This is just a better pencil. And looking at it here, it is weird that the lead sleeve is plastic. Oh, yeah. You don't see that very often. You don't see that very often. But everything else about this is just fantastic. Boy, I wish I had a box of... I, I don't want to give my son this one, but I wish I could go and buy a box of 10 of them yeah. so I could rotate all those to him. Right. He would love it. I think for being plastic, it has good weight as well. I agree with you on the heft part. I think it feels nice in the hand. Well, you can't... You can't buy it. You could steal it. That's about your only option. You'd right have now. to steal it from me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we're not telling you where he lives, listeners. So No. <laughs> I only have one left. <laughs> well, go out and find it. Do some archaeology. Yes. <laughs> see if you could find it. Yeah. But yeah, it's a great pencil. I highly recommend it. If you could find it. If you could, if find, you could it. find it. Well, thank you for coming on. We really appreciate you coming and uh, yes. the, the inspiration here. This is fantastic. Please come back again sometime. Well, <laughs> I was very surprised to be invited in the first place. I, up until the point when listening to you guys, I'd never heard anybody else except that fascinating guy from Michigan. Keith, Keith Pitts. That oh, was amazing. Yeah. He yeah. was, it would have been great to see what he was talking about. Yes, yes. <laughs> that's, been, that's it for the Measured Pencil. Join us next week. Thank you. Goodbye. This was The Measured Pencil with Wes Nelson and Stephen Murray. Theme song and additional music composed and performed by Josh Baumgartner. Additional production support by Two Desk Productions. If you want to see what the pencils look like, please follow us on Instagram at The Measured Pencil. If you'd like to share your pencil story, please record a short audio file, maybe one to two minutes, and email it to us at themeasuredpencil at gmail.com. Or, if you'd like us to review your favorite pencil, 
please email us with the name and it might appear on a future episode. Thanks for listening.